Amsterdam, 1686. A young bride is given an extraordinary wedding gift in a house filled with secrets. Each addition has an unexpected consequence. Behind every closed door, there is a secret longing to be free. Number one bestseller, The Miniaturist, is out now. is outselling J.K. Rowling and has penned the fastest selling debut since Fifty Shades of Grey, but uh, just a year ago, the would-be actress Jessie Burton was struggling to make ends meet. By day, the 31-year-old Londoner would work in the city as a PA, but during the evenings, she was busy writing and rewriting the novel that would become this summer's biggest selling debut, The Miniaturist. And uh, Jessie is here with me. Welcome. Thank you very much. You must be blown away by the <laughs> success am. of this. I am. I'm, I'm flabbergasted by it. Presumably when you set out to write it, the aim was publication and mm. then you'd see what happens. Yeah. I d I, to be honest, I didn't think much beyond publication day. And so what's happened since um, wasn't even in my, my mind, to be honest. Well, we have a copy of it here, so I'm just going to sort of hold that up to make sure that uh, people can be sure they know what we're talking about. Um, a story of the story and what inspired you to write it. Take, take us to Amsterdam for that story. Yeah, I was in Amsterdam just on holiday in 2009 and um, I went to the Rijksmuseum, which is um, their sort of national, one of their museums of all their artifacts. And there I saw a cabinet house or a doll's house that a woman had commissioned, which was built in 1686. And when I discovered that it was an exact replica of her real home, but not just that, but that she'd spent as much money on it as a real house, I was just immediately, uh, well, my antennae started twitching. I just thought, what a great story. And why did she build mm. such a thing she couldn't really use? And, and what kind of life would she have? I mean, we're showing a picture there of the doll's house. It's oh, yeah. incredibly intricate, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It's made of oak and elm and veneered in tortoise shell. And she had pieces um, sent over from Indonesia and Japan and China. So anything she had in her real home, she miniaturized and had mm. put into this tiny world that she looked after. A, a tiny world that you have now effectively put a story to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've created her to be, she's younger, she's 18. And the man she marries, who gives her this wedding, uh, this, this house as a wedding present, is, is twice her age and quite distant, yet kindly. And he gifts her this thing, and she's just a bit insulted. She's, you know, I'm a woman now, I want to be a wife, and, and all that entails. But what happens is she starts, uh, she, she commissions this miniaturist to send her pieces to help her furnish. But the miniaturist starts sending her things that she hasn't asked for, that start presaging the real life events that take place and also starts really exploding all the secrets of this dark new household that she's inhabiting. Tell me about the writing of it and, and when you wrote, because mm. I, I read earlier that <laughs> some of the writing went on when you were apparently writing emails at work, is, that, is that true? Yes, sometimes. Yeah. I, I basically had to make ends meet, so yeah, when I wasn't acting I was working, as you said earlier, as a PA in mm. the city. So a lot of it would be um, typed in emails, but I mean, I, I did manage to get my other work done. <laughs> I feel I should say this. Yes, we should make I sure that we... I wasn't the world's worst PA. No, 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 no but, that's um, important. Yeah, it was, it was just done quite piecemeal. It was a bit of a scrap. Um, you know, I'd patch it together whenever I could. And uh, it took me four years and about 17 drafts to get it where it is now. And what about the process of pushing it towards publication? How did that go? I mean, presumably, as most people experience, not everybody said yes straight away. No. So I had a few rejections and some, some silence when I sent it off to literary agents. Not everybody was interested. And then there were a few who were. And um, eventually one took it on and she took it to the publishers. And to my utter astounding astoundment, they... Um, 11 of them piled in to, to, to the auction. So wow. that was, that was quite amazing. surreal. Whilst I was still working as a PA yes. in the city, so I, I would have all these messages that I was supposed to be acting on <laughs> for, for all the people I was working for. And then on the other side of this <laughs> note, all these publishers' names, and it was very surreal. It's a great story. And you're writing another one already, I believe. I am. It's called Belonging. 
Right. Well, that's its provisional title. And this one is set in the Spanish Civil War and um, also London in the 1960s. So. Well, uh, good luck with that and many congratulations with so this much. one as well, Jesse. Thank you very much indeed for coming Thank in. You. Thank you.